Hey everyone, and welcome to another Raw review, this time for Metal Slug Tactics, a game that released on basically every platform last week. While I did have a code close to pre-release, it wasn't with enough time for me to do a formal review, and I didn't want to rush things just to have a video out the same time as everyone else. So instead, much like with Eve of Calamity, I decided to livestream my entire playthrough and then do a raw review after to give everyone my impressions having played it. If you want the gist of it, I think Metal Slug Tactics is very good. If you're a fan of the series, you'll likely be happy to see those sprites and that art style getting new life in a new genre. And if you love tactics games, while this one is maybe a little simplified, it definitely provides enough opportunities to flex your strategic muscles. For the full review though, I do have some thoughts and it mostly pertains to the state of the game, but you know, this intro is going on long enough. So let's get into the review. So for those unaware, Metal Slug Tactics was announced three years ago during E3. This was actually the last E3, and the whole online thing was a debacle, but regardless, one of the highlights of that E3's presentation was Metal Slug Tactics, a game co-developed by Dotimu and Lake Air Studios. What made it so interesting is that the Metal Slug series has been sort of dormant for a while, and while we now have some mobile game and there is a sort of revival of the original one in a 3D art style, it was great to see that classic kind of 2D pixel art be brought into a new genre. I actually did an interview with it was Cyril Imbert from Dotimu, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, but it was cool to see the passion that this team had for the project. SNK had been going through some tough times for a while, and while sadly they're like 96% owned by the Saudi prince, at least there's something bright to look forward to. Over the years though, I was kind of worried that Metal Slug Tactics would come out and be a total dud because it just kept getting delayed and there was radio silence from the development team for a while. But thankfully, those fears have been put to bed having played the final game. I will say up front though, in its current release, Metal Slug Tactics is a little buggy. The PC version probably fares the best, but even on my rather high-end computer, I still encountered a bunch of crashes and at some point stuttery gameplay. You'll see it in the live stream that's also linked in the description, but apparently on PS5 there is a ton of slowdown during certain boss fights. I can't imagine the Switch version is much better, and the Xbox version I know suffers from some crashes. So right now those are the biggest issues that Metal Slug Tactics has against it. As for anything else, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed the game. I don't think it's the best tactics game I've ever played, and that's mostly because there's maybe a lack of variety in here. But before I jump the gun, let me give you a description of what Metal Slug Tactics is. As the description on the Steam store page says, Metal Slug Tactics brings the explosive charm and nostalgic fun of the cult Metal Slug series to the tactical scene. Get ready for an intense ride through the best of both worlds classic arcade action, and roguelike tactical thrills. Jump into the combat zone and revive your Metal Slug nostalgia in a whole new way. Metal Slug Tactics offers a fresh perspective on the iconic battles of the Metal Slug series. Lead your squad to victory through strategic guile and superior firepower in a perfect blend of classic action and tactical depth. Unleash powerful special attacks and shape the outcome of each encounter. Really, that's the best description I could give for the game because trying to detail a plot is a little silly. There is a struggle against the Metal Slug team and their longtime rival Morden, but truthfully, none of that matters in the slightest. The one thing this game lacks over the originals is that it doesn't have that surprise factor with who the villain is. Morden just is the final villain, and I was a little surprised because in every Metal Slug game, it always ends with aliens taking over the Earth, and uh, you end up teaming up with the villains. But here, it's just a straight, kind of like Metal Slug 1 story, which 
possibly was chosen to reflect this being the first of the tactics genre. I know that Lake Air Studio has said that they would like to develop this into its own series. And while SNK wasn't directly involved in the development of this one, they might be involved in the future. So anyway, no plot really. Perfectly fine. The way the game works is that it tries to marry the run and gun nature of Metal Slug with tactics gameplay. When you start your runs, you'll have to select from three characters, although you only have three when you start. You'll have Marco, Harry, and Theo. By performing certain actions such as beating a boss with X characters or beating a boss while doing X amount of regions, you'll unlock more characters and so on and so forth. By selecting those three characters, you then set off into one of three different regions. Although, again, at the very beginning, you'll only have a single option. From there, the game plays out in a grid-like structure where you'll need to make movements to then counter enemies and attack them. Instead of just going straight for the enemy and being an inch away from them to shoot them, what Metal Slug Tactics emphasizes is making a ton of moves each turn. So the main gist of this system is that it works with something called Adrenaline, which gives you the ability to not only perform special moves, but also the ability to dodge attacks. The more you move, the more your dodge meter goes up, and you can completely negate the damage that enemies might do to you. With Adrenaline as well, as I said, you get special attacks, and those stack between turns. So you want to make a ton of moves in one turn to maybe attack an enemy, or maybe not. There's also elements on the battlefield like barracks or sandbags or whatever that might provide extra shield cover. So combined with your dodge meter, this now gives you even more of a chance to negate damage. At first, Metal Slug Tactics feels overwhelmingly difficult. As you'll see in my first few runs in the live stream, I just get toasted. I didn't really know what I was doing. And even though I paid attention to the tutorial, I was trying to fight against the system that told me to run around. When I acclimated to that, that's when Metal Slug Tactics really clicked. All of your units only have 10 HP, so if you're just running straight into battle, you're going to die miserably and very, very fast. The enemies have varying amounts of health. Some have like two hit points, others have five. In general, they typically have five, and while your special weapon can usually kill them in one hit. Your special weapon is limited in ammo, so you'll need to take missions that restock that ammo. And it's all of these decisions that are going on concurrently that give Metal Slug Tactics its edge. It reminded me of playing Frostpunk 2 earlier this year, where my description to a colleague of mine was that it felt like bullshit was going on at every second. Like, I could not rest. And while that might be overbearing for some people. I love that kind of challenge, the one that constantly has me second guessing what I'm doing or looking around the map to see if there's a better way to do something, to which Metal Slug Tactics actually gives you an undo option for one move. You could position your character and then look and go, oh wait, that's not what I wanted, undo it. Now, as I said in the intro, the only thing that really drags Metal Slug Tactics down is that it doesn't have much mission variety. You'll start off in one of those certain regions, and you'll have three battles before a boss appears. Now, you'll need to select which battle you want to go to based on what it might offer you, such as extra money to upgrade your guns and special abilities. You'll get um, equipment drops that you can deploy a metal slug or a tactical strike or give your characters extra turns, etc. Or you can even get extra XP to level them up for that run. Since this game is a roguelite, each run will be unique. It's not that you die and you're just done, but if you do fail a mission, you will have to restart your run. A typical run, if you do all four regions, will take you about 90 minutes, unless you're going for the true ending, which then is about two hours. So the game isn't very long for a single run, but you will be devoting a lot of time to it to get that true ending since you have to jump through a few hoops. So with all that in mind, I think it kind of thinks that when you're in the specific regions, the missions don't really change much. You'll have ones where you just defeat all enemies, which is pretty typical, 
But then you'll have others where you'll need to protect certain units from being killed or escort them to an exit point. You'll have some missions where you, as a team, need to reach the exit. Then you'll also have special objectives that grant bonus items such as killing all the enemies in X amount of turns or finishing the round without taking damage, etc. And there's enough kind of differentiation that a single playthrough can feel great, but because to get the true ending you'll need to beat the game at least four times, it just starts to get a little repetitive by the end. There's only so many times you could just see a mission that's like, kill everyone, before you're like, yeah, I, I can do that in my sleep. And as you watch in my playthrough by the end, I am very synced in with the synergy of the characters, so I'm just fast forwarding and killing everyone and rounds are going in the blink of an eye. But even so, I feel that there's enough here right now that Metal Slug Tactics is still an enticing prospect. I would have liked to have seen the aliens from the main series, or even differing final bosses based on how you go about the main missions. But I can't fault Laker Studio for taking the route it did. When you're introducing a brand new IP of sorts, you don't want to go so broad right from the start. If Metal Slug Tactics were a much wider game, it probably wouldn't have worked as well right off the bat. Because there's this solid foundation now, Laker Studio has the chance to iterate on it for a sequel and make it even better. But if they had just started with trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink in there uh, right off the bat, it probably wouldn't have landed as well. Really, I just wish there was maybe a little more here. It would be cool if there was some multiplayer, because with the turn-based nature, that would be perfect for how this game plays out. And as I said, I would like more mission variety, maybe some emphasis on saving the POWs, like in the main games. I think this game is ripe for DLC. I really enjoyed my time with it. I probably will do a couple more of the achievements. I have beaten the game with each character, of which there is eight that you can unlock. And, I mean, I'm just happy that this game came out the other end being a success. I'm not sure if I would say this is going to wind up as a Game of the Year candidate for me, but if you like Metal Slug and you like tactics games, it's a hearty recommendation for me. Metal Slug Tactics is very solid, and with a few tweaks, especially patches for those bugs, it could be a no-brainer purchase. I hope you guys enjoyed that review, and if you do happen to buy Metal Slug Tactics, I hope you enjoy that as well. I don't know how many more raw reviews I'll be doing in the future because I do really like scripting out my reviews. As you kind of saw with this one, it's a little rambly, but sometimes it feels good to just let everything out. And depending on how I feel about a game, I might do that again in the future for even something pre-release. At any rate, thank you for sticking around. Um, not sure about the name of the channel right now. I'm kind of brainstorming a few other ideas, but I will be sticking around in the future. I'll be doing even more games, and you know, I look forward to seeing the channel grow and providing something fun for you guys. So thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.